I didn't make a lot of extra because I didn't expect this many people. I mean, I expect, but this is great. How many people know about angels already so I can get a sense? Beautiful. All right, so today's talk is called Step Into Your Power. Go create an extraordinary life with the angels. So, if you know about angels already, you know that they're not just soft, fluffy creatures just looking at flowers. They are powerful. And when you connect with them, you can change your life. One requirement is willingness. There are times in our life when we are having difficulties, real difficulties. And that tends to be the time we get real willing. Like, I need help now. Versus on a day-to-day -day basis, we don't think we should talk to the angels. Like we think that they don't want to be bothered for, help me write this resume. Help me talk to my family, my parents. You know, for the little things, they're not so little. They help. Um, you want to close it to see how it is? And if it gets hot, then we'll open it. Because that is the good temperature. Yeah. So let's close it and then um, you'll let us know if you get too hot. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. That would be beautiful. Lower the buzzer, the shakes. Try to push it. Okay, we'll just go from here. It's a lot quieter. Alright, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have to take a shot. I have to stop. Yeah, I don't stop. Like, I make no way to stop right there. So I'm going to go all the way down. Alright, so one of the things that I learned is that if I connect with my angels on a daily basis, just like I brush my teeth, floss, it's a basic thing. I have more courage, confidence, and strength with whatever I'm doing. And, um, I've always worked with something spiritual. I didn't know it was angels until the past six years. Stepping into your power. The power is already there. The power is right here. The only thing that stops us in connecting with our power is our mind and our memories of things that have happened to us in this life and maybe even past lives. So, we We'll look at someone else and say, why do they, they have so much confidence, why don't I? Versus knowing that we really do have the same confidence as someone else. Wouldn't you agree that stress is probably the number one cause for a lot of anxiety and worry and even disease? What I found, my husband's a chiropractor, so chiropractors work naturally. would be me. <laughs> I have, I'm taking pictures today, so you'll have to excuse me. I'm going to meander just a little bit. Get it. It's one of my stepping into my power results. <laughs> so what happens is, let me just go back for a second. So the power exists. The only thing keeping us from it is just the knowledge that it's right there. And what do I mean the power? The power to end addiction. The power to end unnecessary stress. The power to be happier. Right, so we're going to do a healing technique with Archangel Michael to help us feel that. But the, in the past year, as of last, in the summer, there was a big shift on the planet. We don't have to go into it too much. But well, what's available is everybody, everybody on the planet has been ignited into something called the fifth dimension. Not like the band from the 60s or 70s, most of you won't know. <laughs> we know, right? So I love the fifth dimension. But anyway, so what happened is our hearts have been touched and opened. At the same time as our hearts have been ignited and opened, we are connected to new modalities, new energies in the way we've never been before. And at the same time, look what's happening on the planet. A lot of darkness, right? The light is so bright, it's putting a light on the darkness. If you don't know that you have powers, and I call them superpowers, your ability to be intuitive, your ability to be psychic. When I first used that word, I really didn't like it. You know, it, to me it conjured up. I gotta wear orange turban or, or you know, just 
the psychic was not comfortable for me. But the truth is, the psychic ability is a natural ability of all human beings. It is the ability to trust your intuition. Where I was born in my country, Japan, they call it the Hara. You feel it in your gut, you know the truth. Most of you in all of your cultures where you are from, you know this. We have this ability to know, but we don't trust ourselves. So what if, have you experienced in your own life when you trust yourself more? You make better decisions. And then, or you, you make that decision, you go, oh, if only I had paid attention. We all have done that. When you work with the angels on a daily basis, again, it's like brushing your teeth, flossing, basic things. It takes about two minutes to talk to your angel, either from your heart, out loud, your mind, connect. Your ability, your superpowers, I call it, to be intuitive is going to strengthen. The other thing I'm guided to say today, you take care of your body in a way that it's a listening vessel. This is, we are a piece of skin, muscle, and blood, right? But we are a listening vessel. We are energy. And when you allow this energy to listen and connect every day, you're just going to make better decisions. I'm 64 years old, and I, a lot of my health comes from the peacefulness of working with the angels. I didn't always have this. I was always guided, but I made a lot of mistakes in my life. And what I saw when I looked back, every step of the way, an angel was there to tell me, talk to this therapist, listen to what she says, <laughs> follow this direction. And when I followed those breadcrumbs, and I was really uncomfortable, because change, walking towards being powerful, really fully alive, can be frightening. It can be scary. It can be like, why bother? It's just, I don't need to be uncomfortable. But if we work with the angels and have them wash away of the unnecessary stress, there is an unnecessary stress because we put it on ourselves. When we have the ability to clear this energy on a daily basis, you feel freer. You just feel freer. And when you feel freer, you feel more hopeful. And when you're more hopeful, you do take actions on your health. You take actions on increasing your finances, changing your career. You take that action to call someone in your family that you've been thinking about for a long, long time. You know, we all have the same concerns. You know, our health, our families, our work, and some of us, our spiritual connection. And again, working with angels is for everybody, regardless of your spiritual background. They are pure angelic beings. And in different countries, they even have different names. You know? But know that at any given moment, 10 million angels are around you. 10 million angels. That's a lot of good energy. 10 million. And then you have your guardian angels. Most of us have at least two. Some of us more. Then you have wonderful people who crossed over, who love you, they're around you too. And your pets. And those that you had a little disagreement with and they passed over, they're in something called a spiritual university. <laughs> you know? So they can still clean up their act and you can still pray for them. You don't have to have fancy prayers working with angels. Just straight talk. And let them know what you want and need. And ultimately, when you ask for something, know that you've been heard. If you ask for the healing of someone, if you ask for this new job, you ask for an opportunity, you ask for some uh, help to be more confident, you ask for help with your addictions, and addictions could be chemical, food, drink, it could be behaviors, the angels hear you. So, I say the most streamlined, quickest way for happiness and to access your superpowers is to work with the angels. Three things, moving to the fifth dimension, which we all have activated. What happens is once it's activated, that's the fifth dimension, your third and fourth dimensions are going to kick in. The third dimension is, is 3D, living in the world as reaction. Third dimension. Many of us are in that, but we're... We don't even know there's anything else. We're, you know, I remember being like that. 
like a teenager or something. You're, you're just stuck in your emotions. There's nothing else. There's like, who did me wrong? Life sucks. It's not going to get any better. Get out of my way. You know? New York City, right? <laughs> but that's 3D. Fourth dimension is when we move into something else like this. And usually it takes something very difficult in our lives where we hit rock bottom or something happens where we just say, there's got to be something. And that's when some of us may have had an intervention with the angels. Fourth dimension, surrender. Surrender. That's powerful. When you can say surrender to your God, Goddess, doesn't matter what, whatever your energy is, that's your higher power, right? And then that allows for fifth dimension. You have an experience of a softer, kinder way of living, which is this. It's not just for the very wealthy, because you and I know some very wealthy people who aren't too happy, you know? You know, I know some homeless people that are really, really happy. It's all different once it's homeless. So, just a quick story, and then I'll do the healing meditation. Back when I, I'll, I'll give this story because I, I get so many stories the angels tell me to tell and I want to share this one. Also, I really wanted to get married. I was 35 and I knew it was time. Maybe I'll start looking. Maybe I don't want to be single forever. Um, deep in my heart, I told everybody, you know, I'll just be single. It's fine. I didn't see very many people with happy marriages, so why should I bother? But yet, I did see a couple people. But I didn't believe it was for me. And when I, so my willingness was, all right, angels, I'll try. I'll try and see if there's someone good. And I won't just go to a bar and sit at the bar and wait for someone, <laughs> which I did before. And I met a lot of not great relationships. So anyway, I did um, follow a suggestion to go to a healthy singles party back in 1988 at the limelight. Did you think I wanted to go to a healthy singles party? Hell no. But I was willing to try something because I knew what I was doing wasn't working. I was meeting a lot of really strange, dramatic relationships, but they went nowhere. So I was willing, I was willing to have a good relationship. And out of that came the message to go to this limelight, healthy singles parties, and I went. Um, the seventh time I went, I went week after week. I made myself go, even when I had to go by myself. I was really uncomfortable. Um, I talk about this because some of us have given up on having that really solid love relationship. So I meet Lou on the seventh time that I go there alone. And I saw his energy and I knew it was him. He didn't know that I knew it was him. <laughs> and. Um, and I, I said to my angels, I accept, I accept this. I didn't have to say anything because I knew it was going to work out. Basically, we met in August, we got engaged in November, and we got married the following June. And then shortly after, I meet the most wonderful man. He's got a real job, he's kind, he's loving, he's honest. And I um, freak out. I go into the deepest depression that I wanted to check out. What is that? I said, I'd rather stop my life than continue this. Now, that's not very rational. I was giving my power away to a fear of intimacy, a fear of trust. So I listened to my angels and they said, go see this therapist. The therapist directed me to stop drinking. I wasn't drinking every day. But that little bit of wine cooler made me feel so much more relaxed. And then when I visit my relatives, and I would get nervous, getting to know them better, I would have a double scotch with no water, no ice. <laughs> that would make me feel real good. And I think that was a problem. I thought God made alcohol so I could feel better. <laughs> I mean, why would He make it, right? He, she. So, but what I found out is I had not developed the skills to really communicate to talk, to be intimate with someone, to share deeply. I knew how to have relationships that were on the surface, but I didn't know how to... I had abusive relationships before. But what I saw was that, for me, the message was, 
to take care of my body. To take care of my body. And by doing that, I have a spiritual awakening. I'm not saying AA is for everyone, but for me, in listening to this woman, and listening to my angels, what I saw was that I had the possibility of opening my heart, trusting, and being able to speak in front of you like this. Being able to communicate, share myself, share my worst stories of how I came out victorious because of that. And most addictions are based in fear, some fear. And mine was fear of people. No, I thought it was the love of Remy Martin. No, it was the fear of people. <laughs> or what? Yay, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right? So anyway, so that's one of the many stories. I'm alive because I listen to my angels. And there are other times in my life where I listened to their message and a door opened up. Another door opened up. I became an actor. I became, I sold my paintings on Access Hollywood. King Cattrall bought my paintings. I mean, how did this happen? Because I was able to show up instead of being, being um, with lack of self-confidence. So what the angels will do is open doors for you open doors for you. You have to step through, but they will open, they'll show you the doors, and you step through. And by stepping through, families heal, your body heals, you find your life purpose, and these are the things that happen. All right, so right now we're going to do the Archangel Michael meditation, the best of the ability of you all sitting on the floor. <laughs> Otherwise, um, take about five minutes or so. And this is something that we all can do. So, first of all, you and I are whole and complete, pure, power, loving energy of the universe. What happens is we have connected to our bodies, our cords between us and something that happened. Between us and something that happened. Childhood, high school, at, at your job. It could be physical, it could be emotional. There could be people who did things to, who are, even right now, sending us lower energy. Lower energy is anger, resentment, hostility. You know, people are not aware of their thoughts. They're not aware that their energy is like moving out. And when most of you who are here today, I would say are empaths. People who, our hearts are open. You wouldn't come to an awakened fair if you didn't have an awakened psyche, an awakened aura. You're open. And that makes us very, very sensitive. So Archangel Michael can help you have the courage, confidence, and strength to keep moving forward no matter what happens. So we ask him to be by our sides every day. He's holographic, so he can be with everyone at the same time. And again, no special prayers. Just say, Archangel Michael, please be with me. So what we're going to address right now, each and every one of you, think about some of those cords that you might have between you and others. Worry, anxiety, stress, anger, rage, sorrow, deep sorrow, any deep emotion that you know that's pulling you down. And at, at this time, if you're ready and willing, we're going to ask Archangel Michael to cut these cords. And if you have a cord with a very special loved one, because sometimes we can have lower energies with our family members, with our parents. Don't worry about cutting the cord of our loved ones. We're only cutting the negativity. The silver cord between you and a loved one is forever. We're just going to cut the cords that are like a vampire, robbing our energy. And people, again, they don't know that they do this. So we don't blame them. And it's their own free will until they become aware that they do it. So the best that we can do is we do the work. We free ourselves, they're going to feel something different. They're going to like, ah, they're going to feel better. Because you think about the energy exchange, it's hard work, it's exhausting, right? So, close your eyes for a second. And we are now going to ask Archangel Michael, with his sword of white light, to please now come and cut and sever all cords of attachment between us and others that no longer serve us. We see him just cutting and we see them dropping away. We see them all dropping away. 
and also this includes any vows we may have made in the past in other lifetimes. We may have made vows if we were in um, ashrams or monasteries. We may have made vows of poverty. We may have made vows of celibacy that are getting in our way of having what we truly want and need in this life. So we ask now Archangel Michael to now cut and sever all these cords. And they drop away. And we ask Archangel Michael now as a sacred vacuum. He will enter the top of your head through your crown chakra and he's going to vacuum your body of all tension and worry, any disease, any rage, any sorrow, any sickness. This sacred vacuum moves in and around your head, down through your neck, down around your shoulders, down through your elbows, to the tips of your fingers, down through your lungs, your heart, your stomach, your liver, your kidneys, your sexual organs, down through your hips, vacuuming away all that is not love and light, moving through your thighs, your knees, through your calves, your ankles, and your feet to the tips of your toes, pulling all unwanted energies up to the top of your head. And it's all transmuted into pure liquid diamond white light. And that light moves back into your body and it fills every cell of your body. And you are glistening in pure peace and pure harmony. And this sacred vacuum also right now is lifting out of this room any lower energies, taking it all up into the heavens. And also where each and every person lives, where they sleep, where they work, if they ride in a vehicle, any place that any of the people here in this room occupy, we are asking Archangel Michael to vacuum all the energies. And they lift it all up into the heavens, all transmuted in pure love and light, and placed back into all these places of liquid diamond white light. And we ask Archangel Raphael also now to bring his healing emerald green light into any, any places in our bodies that need healing at this moment. This beautiful emerald green light. We thank him for the perfect healing. We thank you Archangel Michael and Archangel Raphael for being with us in this moment. And we also ask Michael to remind us to shield ourselves in a beautiful deep blue violet light, like a bubble, surrounding ourselves from the top of our head to below our feet. And this beautiful deep blue violet bubble of light, which is about two inches thick, will protect us on a daily basis from absorbing any unwanted energies. We keep our perfect peace and calm within us, and we keep out any energies that we don't need. And this lasts about 12 hours, so we do it in the morning, and we can do it at night. I'm also guided to tell you, you, each and every one of you, can send this beautiful blue bubble of light to anyone that you love, any loved ones. Surround them in this light. They will be protected. Your parents, your brother, your sister, your family members, even some of your co-workers, you can surround them in the beautiful bubble of light. And we thank you, Archangel Michael, for your presence today. And so it is. So this is something that you can do very simply. Ask him to cut your cords on a daily basis. Ask him to vacuum you in the area. You have the superpower. You have this ability. Each and every one of you. And you need to practice your practice. Each day it gets better and better. If you, as you progress on this path, you can vacuum someone else's body from a distance. You'll know who you are to do that. You can cut their cords. If you feel 
you know this person really well, ask their guardian angel, may I have permission to cut your cords? So you can see how you can begin to send your healing to others. It is said that one of the things that we should do is send those people that we really don't like a lot love. And you can send them pink light. You can send them pink light. That's the rose, beautiful rose colored light. There are other archangels that you can learn about that have specific duties and jobs, but I think the most effective one right now is Archangel Michael. Work with him, give you courage, confidence, and strength in all of your actions and all your choices on a daily basis, and you're going to see results. Okay. Um, So right now, I'm going to do the um, raffle for the one-hour session with me. Um, I do make an offer also. If you want to book a session with me, I'm doing 50% off all my services for anyone who meets me at the Wake and Care. So all my um, fees and everything are on my website. Or you can meet me at my booth. I'm going to be there all day. So you can talk to me. I don't go back to my reader table. So um, that's how people do that. And anything else? Yeah, our table is uh, in the hallway as you first enter the event. From the main lobby of the hotel is the that, that hallway. You can get into the big space here. Yeah, in that hallway. Okay, before we go, since we have a little bit of time, are there any questions? Because I feel like there's a question. Anybody have a question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what is your experience if you have a recommendation of if we wanted to call in, let's say, Archangel Michael or Lord before we go into work? work mm -hmm. to have that protection. What's, mm -hmm. what's, how, what's your personal mantra? How do you recommend calling him in? Just like you're doing. Archangel Michael, please surround me with your, your light and protection. That's it. Many of you work in environments where you don't even have your own office. So you're in these cubicles and you've got the space and everybody's energy coming at you. Like, I could not do that. <laughs> so you can do that. But just have that blue light around you. And also obsidian or labradite. Get a black crystal, stick it in your bra, or wear it as jewelry, they won't know. But crystals are very powerful also. Tiny, tiny crystal can hold a lot of energy. So learn about crystal, um, crystals also. Yeah, just, just ask it. Like if I forget to do the protection, I'm just walking to the subway, I go, blue light, like that. Like you've watched movies of, or cartoons of, of beings with superpowers. How do you do it? You have the power. You have the power. You're in the subway and it's packed, and you're walking through, or you're walking through New York City, and your immediate reaction is, "Oh my gosh, I got to push through all these people. These tourists are walking too slow." Uh-uh. White light all around me. Thank you very much. I see it emanating from me, and they move. I'm telling you, they move out. Try it. All right. You have superpowers. They're, they're not making these movies for nothing. These ideas for these movies with people with superpowers, they're not, they came from somewhere. All of our beautiful tales of people being able to heal. We have had this ability for thousands of years. And many of you are going to be the forerunners and you're going to take this message out there. It's time. It's really time. They didn't make these stories up. They came from actual energy connections. So, any other questions? How do you get in the raffle? Oh, right. Oh, well, those who came in early. <laughs> Superpowers! <laughs> well, those who came in had, a, a, had an email and had a fly with the number on it. If you did not get it, I will offer you a like a five minute audio reading. Email me, contact me, let me know that you did you know you were at the awakening there. Uh -huh. And um, I will give you Is it the VIP people? No. Oh, oh. I just had the flyer, I have a flyer that had numbers on it. And I'm giving away the one hour session. Oh Who's see. number three? There you go. <laughs> Information and then um, you probably already gave it to me, just to verify. Thank you. Right. And um, we actually have time for another question.
Yes. Um, I had. Uh...